All right, today we start the last chapter of the course. What? Oh, yeah. For what? It was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday you had the whole class to do it. Yeah, and you have until Friday to do it. Okay, let's. So basically, this last chapter is a lot of the physics applications of these things. So when you first learn about work, When you first learned about work in physics, what, how did you guys learn it? FD. FD. Yeah, that's the, that, but that's, see, that's assuming lots of things, yeah? First of all, the force has to be a constant force, and it has to be acting in the same direction as... Displacement. Yeah, as the displacement, right? Yeah. So, when you took more physics, like what if the force is not acting in the same direction as the... Displacement. Then so you guys learn F D cosine theta then, yeah? Oh. Yes. Because that's the component of where it's acting in, right? But what would happen if the force is not constant? No, then you do an integral. integral. Then you do an integral. That's what integrals are for, yeah? So you would integrate that. But what would happen if the force and the displacement are not constant. Double integral. integral. No. <laughs> you just have to do a single, single integral. We call that a, a line integral. And that's what we're going to learn today. Line integrals. So, if you read your book, which I know you don't, <coughs> the work is equal to, now you guys know work is a, is a, is a, is a no, it's a scalar. Oh, it is. <laughs> we did this in PCH. Work is equal to force dot d, where d is the displacement vector. And when you use the dot product, remember? How do you find the magnitude of the dot? Uh, oh, no. no, well not magnitude, because the work, the dot product is already a scalar. So how do you, what is the magnitude of that scalar? Remember? The length of this vector times the length of this vector times cosine theta. <laughs> That's where the cosine theta comes from, by the way. Anyway, but what would happen, like I told you, if the force and the displacement are not constant? Well, we have a line integral. So if you look in your book, work is equal to the integral from a to b of f of r of t dot r prime of t and then dt. There you go. That's it? Yep. Okay. But if, I mean, if you think about it, it's the same thing because what is r prime? Wait, what is r? Velocity. Well, position. Oh. R is always the position vector, yeah. Velocity. So this would be the velocity vector. So what happens when you integrate the velocity vector? Acceleration. No, you position. integrate. You get position, <laughs> which is which, which is the displacement vector, right? And then when you dot it with the force, that's work. Oh. Yeah. So it it makes sense. Okay. So tonight's homework. Oh, you're just computing it, so it's easy. So let's take a look at the three examples they have in the book. Now, do you guys even bother to look at the examples in the book? Because if you look at the examples, it tells you how to do the problem, you know? So first example, find the total work done. So this is a two-dimensional <coughs> example. On an object that traverses the parabolic arch, R of t, I'm not going to write the t. Now, they write it with the I, J, K form. I don't, I, I don't like it. I, I like to write it like this, t, t squared. Now remember, this position vector here, this is, this is given parametrically. That's just like the parametric equations, x equal t and y equal t squared, right? We talked about this before. Mm -hmm. And it says t goes from 0 to 1, subject to a force. I'm not going to write the x and y, and I'm going to write the vector like this. Here's the force, x, y times y squared. See, the force is not constant. Uh -huh. This is the force vector. Yeah. This is how the particle is traveling. So what is the work done as the particle travels from t equals 0 to t equal 1? What is the work done? 
Okay, so all you're going to do is do this integral. So you're going to do an integral from, what are the limits of this integral? Zero. Zero to one, because we're doing it in terms of t. And then now we have to compute <coughs> f of r of t dot r prime of t. So let's compute this first. What is f of r of t? What happens when you take r and plug it into the uh, force function? What do you get? Force vector, rather. Remember, this is like saying x equals t and y equals t squared. So what is <coughs> x, y? T, t, t cubed. Um, and t to, the four. t to the 4. Dot r prime. What is the derivative of this? In other words, the velocity vector. 1, t. One two. 2, t. And remember how to compute dot product? <coughs> you multiply the x components. You multiply the y <coughs> components, that's 2t to the fifth. There you go. That's what this part here is, the integrand. So t cubed plus 2t to the fifth dt. That's easy enough. That's an easy integral. So what? 1 fourth t to the fourth plus 1 third t to the sixth from 0 to 1. Plug in the top number. 1 fourth plus 1 third, plug in the <coughs> bottom number, 0 plus 0, so the answer is 7 twelfths. That is the work done in this particular problem. Is that the answer they have? Yep. So that's an easy two-dimensional example. Let's do a three-dimensional example. We're going to scroll. Where is it? Oh, here you go. We don't need the answers. We're good, that's why, right? Okay, I'm gonna erase. This is very mechanical. Hey, Ms. Mark. It's in the book. No, we just erased the set. I'll give it to How about take a picture then? Why would you want to write when you can just take a picture? I've had it at 3%. Okay, now we got to, oh, look at the glare. Okay, next example. Find the total work done on this curve. So the position vector is <coughs> t, t squared, is that t cubed? Yep, t cubed. And what is the force vector? The force vector is x, y, uh, y, z, and x, z. And we want to compute the work done from t equal negative 1, <coughs> t equal negative 1, to t equal 1. So let's first of all compute f of r of t. Now remember, this is like x equals t, y equals t squared, z equals t cubed. So if I plug these in into the, the force vector, what do we got? What is x times y? T cubed. What is y times z? T to the fifth. What is x times z? T to the fourth. And I need to dot that with r prime of t, which is the, so if this is the position vector. How do you find the velocity vector? 1, 2t, 3t squared. So compute the dot product of that. Multiply the x components. Multiply the y components, 2 t to the 6, multiply the z components, and add them up. Hey, we've got 2 t's to the 6's, so that's like t cubed plus 5 t to the 6. And we're going to integrate that with respect to t from negative 1 to 1, and that's going to give you the work done here. So this is another easy integral. Of course, the ones you're going to get in your homework, some of them might not be that easy. Though. 1 fourth t to the fourth plus 5 sevenths t to the seventh from negative 1 to 1. Plug in the top number. 1 fourth plus 5 sevenths minus, plug in the bottom number. 1 fourth minus 5 sevenths. <coughs> 1 fourth cancel out, and you get? 10 sevenths. <coughs> what are the units of work? See, I don't even know units. Joules. Well, I can figure it out because 
it's force times displacement. Newton. So Newton meters. There are units on there. Though. Yeah, because I think they just assume you know what the units are. Is it Newton meters? I don't know. I don't Probably. Know. You're in physics now. Who took physics last year? Newton meters. Is Joule a Newton know, meter? Someone just Google it. Okay, whatever. Ah. I don't know. Boy, I need to know. I'm not really. I'll, I'm going to tell you the truth right now. I'm not really good at these physics applications, you know. Okay, and then the last one. Okay, this is the toughest one. Oh, same thing. Look at the picture in the book. Those of you following on the on the, on the video, turn to page 824. Now it says, what if the curve is not smooth? Like the two the examples we had, the curve was nice and smooth, right? Differentiable. But if, what if it's not smooth? Look, look at the examples they give there. What if you have these sharp points that the graph comes to these cusps? What do you do? Well, uh, as long as it's piecewise smooth, we can compute the work. But then we're going to have to make separate integrals for each one, though. You can't, you can't do it with just one integral. So. Here is the example. Where's the where's the thing? Where's the problem? Ah! <laughs> no more. Where's no? There's a problem. Where is the problem? No, they have the solution there. I'm looking for where's the problem? Oh, there's the problem. Haha. Okay. Come on, I'll have two percent. <laughs> what? Did you say? Okay, we're gonna need the whole board for this one because we're gonna to have to do three integrals. I'll tell you right now, the one on the test might have, might have more, more than three. Okay, so here is your force vector. Oh, you guys getting tired already? Oh, the, finally we got some transcendental functions. Oh, this is a two-dimensional one. This is weak. Well, what is a transcendental? Is what? What is a transcendental function? A function that is not algebraic. What? So okay, there are two kinds of functions in mathematics. There are algebraic functions, the one that use the al algebraic operators like addition, subtraction, multiplic multiplication, division, raising to a power, and extracting roots. Any other function that is not algebraic is called transcendental. So those would be like exponential, logarithmic, trigonometric and inverse trigonometric. Those are called the transcendental functions. Y equals x are transcendental. No, it's algebraic because it's like x to the first. Oh, yeah, okay, no. <laughs> okay, e to the y, e to the, the darn e glare, negative sine pi x. So this is just a two-dimensional one. So this is your force vector. Now, what about your your Position, uh, uh, the path. Well, it says C is the triangle with vertices 1, 0. So that means we're going to need to draw. So here, 1, 0, 0, 1, <coughs> and negative 1, 0. So that'll be over here. Okay, so that we have a triangle and it's traveling counterclockwise. Now, it doesn't really matter where you start, but you've got to make sure you're going counterclockwise like this. Okay? So the hardest part is you've got to write the parametric equations for these things here. Okay, which one do you want to do first? A, B, or C? C. Okay, you want to do C first, this one right here? Yeah, okay, how do I write the parametric equation? Okay, remember we did this and when we did the review, review of vectors. How do you write the equation of a line in, par in parametric form, remember? What do you need to write an equation of a line in three dimensions or, or if you do it parametrically? A point and a vector that points in the direction yeah, of the line, which is what? What is this vector? Head minus tail. Two, zero. zero. If you use this as the starting point, then what is it? X equals oh, negative 1 plus 2t. Yeah, 2t. Y equals zero, zero plus 0t. Zero so 
Oh, let's jump. Yeah. Oh, of course, y is zero because there's no y. Yeah. It's always zero because when the particle is traveling on this thing, the y coordinate is always zero. Ah, that's weak. So can you see that what 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 is your what are what are the values of t that you're going to use in this problem? T is going to go from zero to one. Zero to one. How do you know? Yes. No, because if you plug in zero for t here, you get negative one, right? And then if you plug in one for t there, you get one. So it starts here and it ends there. So that means you got to keep it consistent. If you if you just make each integral going from zero to one, it'll be a lot simpler. Okay. So. That's going to be our r, so if you want to write it like this, r is equal to negative 1 plus 2t comma 0. That's your position vector for, the, for this first part here. Okay, now let's do the second part. This one. So this is your initial point. What, what vector points in the direction of the line? Head minus tail. <coughs> negative 1. Head minus tail. One. So it's going to be, so you, if you use this as the initial point, it's going to be 1 minus t, y equals 0 plus t. Correct? Correct. And is, double check. If I plug in 0 for x, do I get this? I mean 0 for t, sorry. If I plug in 0 for t. If I plug in 1 for t, do I get that point? Yes. Yes. So that's why it works. And if you rather write it like this, then write it like this. Uh, it doesn't matter to me, as long as you keep everything straight. Maybe I should call this R1, R2, keep it straight. Okay, finally, the third leg over here. Okay, find the vector that points in the direction of the line. So you go head minus tail, negative 1, head minus tail, negative 1. And if you use this as the starting point, it's going to be x equals 0 minus t and y equals 1 minus t. And does it check out? If I plug in 0 for t, do I get this point? Yeah. If I plug in 1 for t, you get that point? Yeah. It all works out. So r3 is equal to negative t comma 1 minus t. Now, all you have to do is, once you do, this is the hardest part, then you just do what we did in the previous two examples, except you've got to do it three times. So here's your force vector over here. We need to compute. OK, so we're going to make three things. Let's try to make it even. Okay. So the first leg over here, this is f. What is f of r of t equal to? R1. <coughs> so remember, this is like x equals this and y equals that. That's what we have here. So take it and plug it into here. So what is it going to be? E to the y, so e to the 0 is 1, comma, and then we've got to plug that thing in for x there. So you get negative sine of pi x, but x is 2t minus 1. Oh, we went over the line. And then we've got to dot that with r prime of t, the velocity vector. So if this is r, what is the, uh, what is the derivative of that? Look, I can do this. You guys got to do it. Two, zero. Okay, dot it. What's the dot product of these two? two. One times two One. plus zero. That's weak. dt from zero to one. So 2t from zero to one is two minus zero, which is two. Okay, that's the work done on this first leg over there. Ah, I thought it was going to be something interesting, but it's, it's really not. Okay, the second leg, we're going to compute f of r of t. So we're going to take, okay, so now here's our second leg. I've got to take these things and plug it into there. So you're going to get plug in for y, e to the t, e to the t, comma, and then I've got to plug this in over there. So what do you get? Negative sine pi x, which is 1 minus t. And then you got to dot that with r. I'm not going to write it. OK, so here, what is the derivative? What is the velocity vector there? Negative 1, 1. Oh, now we're going to have an interesting integral, I hope. So take the dot product, and you get? Negative. Negative e to the t minus sine pi 
1 minus t. Integrate that with respect to t from 0 to 1. Okay, find the antiderivative. I'll do the first one. Negative e to the t. Who's got the second one? Ha! Cosine. Negative cosine phi. Are you sure? Yes. Yes. Negative cosine phi. Are you sure? Over pi. Over pi. O1 over pi. Okay, now are, is that correct? Is that the correct antiderivative? Close. Close. No, because it's a negative two. No, because the derivative of the box is no. negative one too, yeah. Okay, from zero to one, plug in the top number. Negative e, plug in the bottom number. Zero, cosine of zero is one, so minus one over pi, correct? Now plug in zero. That's going to be negative one minus, that's going to be pi, so cosine of pi is negative one, so you plus one over pi. So what does that all come out to? Negative e minus two over pi plus one. That's what I get. Are you guys, I hope you guys are double checking so we don't have to go back. And then finally, the last, the third leg over here. So f of r of t, so we've got to take these things and plug it into the, the force vector there. Isn't that symmetric? So you don't have to no, but yeah, these things might be symmetric, but the force acting on it might not be symmetric. You know what I mean? The force might be something here, but over here might be something else. So you, you, unless you have like a, a uniform force or a symmetric force, you, 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 no, oh, no. You, no, the force is not symmetric here. So, plugging it in, you get, what is y? e to the 1 minus t, and then negative sine pi, and what is x equal to? Negative t. And then, taking the derivative of your velocity is, vector is going to be negative 1, negative 1. Okay, dot product, negative e to the 1 minus t plus sine pi <coughs> negative t, but sine of negative theta is negative sine theta, it's an odd function, so why don't we just do that? You want to do that? <laughs> dt, just tell me if I make a mistake, then 0 to 1. Antiderivative. What's the antiderivative of the first one? Wang. Um, no, no, e to the t. Say what? One minus t. One minus t. Minus in the front or positive? Uh, uh, positive. Positive. Cho. Yeah. Antiderivative of the second term. Cosine of pi t over pi. Okay. Cosine pi t over pi. And then we're going to go from 0 to 1. Plug in the top number. Uh, e to the 0 is 1. Cosine of pi is negative 1. E to the 1 is e. <coughs> cosine of 0 is 1. So we get 1 minus 2 over pi minus e. So that's the work done. Hey, look, it's the same thing, Cho. It came out, it's exactly the same thing as the second one, the second leg. Well, I, I think that's just coincidental. Yeah, this path and this path are symmetrical, but like I said, the force not, might not be. But it came out the same. But then look, it's, this one's going up and this one's going down. I don't know. So if you add up all three together, what is your final answer going to be? <coughs> Negative 2e minus 4 over pi plus 3. This is the total work. Is that the answer they have? Hope we didn't do anything wrong. So again, a lot of computations, just what you guys like. Wait, plus 3. Wait, did something wrong? You mean plus 4 because 2 plus 1 plus 1. Oh, there you go. There. See, look, they have 4 too. Yeah, but they have 2e. Yeah, you put oh two yeah, e. I got 2 each. I can't even add 2 plus 1 plus 1. Oh, <coughs> Park even woke up just for that. <laughs> yeah. You were here for Okay, there you go. Okay, so tonight's homework, and this is, I add, 
Oh, you got to refresh, you know, because I added one problem to tonight's homework. Something about an ellipse. Let's just see how you guys do it now. We're probably going to have to do it on the board tomorrow. All right. Now we are done. You got 30 minutes for test corrections. Come over here. Grab your test. What? No. No one sits in the lounge chair except me. Huh? When you become Admiral, then you